Jesus opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. No, there is one true God in the sense of the creator. <clears throat> Only the one true God can create things ex nihilo. Only God can make something out of nothing. What this is speaking of is his surrogates, his surrogates. We are imagio dei beings. We are made in his image and likeness. We have intelligence because he has intelligence. We are procreative because he is creative. He gave man dominion over the earth and over the animals because he has dominion. He makes us in his image and likeness. We are gods as his surrogates, but we are not God. It has more to do with Semitic language than it does with essence. Only he is God. But as we are made in his image and likeness, men have the potential to function as his surrogates. Now let's understand this. Suppose you have a uh, little pets for little kids like gerbils. And you get these gerbils as baby gerbils and you put them in a gerbil cage with a wheel and all the stuff that they play with and their food and so on. As far as that gerbil is concerned, you're the one who gives him his food. You're the one who takes care of him. You're the one who's the, who's the higher power. You are the only higher power that the gerbil knows. Well, that's like our relationship with God, broadly speaking. He's so much far and above us, we can't really know the total spectrum of what he is and even who he is beyond what the scripture tells us as yet. One day we shall see him face to face. We shall know as we have been fully known, but right now our understanding of him is limited. Our relationship to God is like the relationship of the animal kingdom to us. When you read Mark's gospel in chapter one, it describes Jesus in the temptation narrative as being alone with the animals because it's showing him as the last Adam. The first Adam fell in the garden. The last Adam obviously did not. There's only two generic men in God's economy, Adam and Jesus. When you're born, you're an Adam. When you're born again, you're in Christ, okay? Well, Adam was given dominion over the animals and told he could name them. He became the surrogate God. He became the surrogate ruler of the earthly creation of God. That was God's plan. Now, in the millennial reign of Christ, it'll be the same thing. The faithful believers will be the surrogate rulers of the Lord, but it'll be under Christ. So Adam was to function under Christ. When Adam heard God walking in the garden, that was Jesus. That was, that was the son. That was him. Okay. It's the idea of surrogacy based on being imagio dei beings made in his image and likeness, that we are his proxy rulers, his proxy rulers and his proxy co-creators, and that we procreate. That is what it means. The money preachers have taken this and distorted it into the deification of man, the worship of man. This idea of the worship of man is idolatrous. You see it in secular humanism. Its religion is secular psychology, but you also see it with the word faith preachers. It has to do with the spirit of Antichrist. The pagan emperors of ancient Rome had themselves deified by the Roman Senate. Whenever you see a man deified in worship, there's an antichrist spirit in it. And there is an antichrist spirit in these word faith money preachers teaching the little gods heresy. They're taking that passage out of all context and making it into something it does not say nor intend to say. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless.